So, we already have the first update to Ableton Move's firmware. Version 1.2 was released a few days ago, and we're gonna take a look at the new features in a moment. But also, Ableton have promised to deliver regular updates to Move. In their IG post, they say, stay tuned for more incremental updates every six to eight weeks. So this got me wondering when they say incremental, do they mean that all updates will be just minor updates with no flagship features that will make us go, OMG, we got warping now, or wow, we have proper sample chopping, or damn, we got that court mode we've all been asking for. Are we ever gonna get this kind of update? I suspect that Move's limited user interface and processing power may make it difficult for Ableton's dev team to deliver these major updates. But guys, please prove me wrong. But overall, I'm stoked to see what updates they are cooking for us and from my observations, dropping regular updates on hardware groove boxes is a very good marketing strategy for companies because people love to get new features for free and it creates buzz and a reason to talk about the device in question. And this video is kind of a proof that this strategy works. Anyways, let's look at the new features in 1.2. It's a relatively minor update and probably not one that will make people who weren't willing to buy move change their mind. But please let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm looking forward to reading them and I do try to reply to all of them. So move 1.2 lets you sequence in 16 pitches mode. So this is about step sequencing. I don't really step sequence melodies, but maybe you will find it useful. So previously you could only sequence a single note for each of these samples in the drum rack. But now the last note that you hit on the 16 pitches section here will be sequenced to the step sequencer. Now this new update also fixes something that was annoying me every time I tried to build my own drum racks. So let's say we have this empty drum kit. Let's say I go to my user samples and load up a kick drum. When I hit the next pad to load a snare, it stays in the same folder. So the previous behavior was that every time you hit a new pad to load the next sample, it went all the way back to this root folder of the samples on move. So the fact that you can now go you know, add the snare, then maybe add a hi-hat from the same sample pack. It makes building kits much faster. So even if this seems like a relatively minor thing, it is actually the most useful thing from the whole update for me at least. So another feature is MIDI sync. It's now possible to send MIDI sync out when movie set to receive MIDI notes. This allows USB MIDI devices with internal sequencers and arpeggiators such as Arturia Beatstep Pro, Akai MPK series or Novation Launch Key series to be synced to Move's clock. For USB MIDI devices capable of passing MIDI signals through, such as Akai MPK series, additional external gear can also be synced to Move's clock. Such setups allow Move to act as a central clock source while retaining playability from the connected USB MIDI device. So essentially, if you have a MIDI keyboard with an arpeggiator like the Arturia Mini Lab 3 that I have here, and you set the arpeggiator to external sync, you need to set this on the actual device. And on Move, you need to make sure that you go to the MIDI settings and sync send should be enabled. So now the arpeggiator of the keyboard will sync to Move's tempo. So syncing ARPs and sequencers from MIDI keyboards is cool, but Move already has a sequencer and an arpeggiator. So the use case here is a bit limited for me, and it only highlights one big limitation of Move, the fact that you can't have MIDI in and MIDI out working both at the same time, which makes using a synth as both a sound module and a MIDI controller kind of impossible or, or hard unless you constantly switch from MIDI in to MIDI out. I tried it with my Micro Cork 2 and it did sync the ARP, but that's only good for quick dollis jams if you can't integrate the synth properly. 
And also, you can't record the audio to an audio track, although you can of course sample it. So using it with a hardware synth, I wish there was a better way to do that. But I realized that people who are into doorless tinkering and connecting several devices and syncing them may be happy about this one, I just don't like to do that personally. And there are other small improvements, and I will link the release notes for Ableton Move 1.2 in the video description for you to check out, but stuff like the playhead now pulses when loop mode is live. Move now supports loading all samples from packs, which if you don't understand what that means, the samples in Ableton's first party packs have this DRM, so they can't be distributed and loaded everywhere. So now we can load them on Move with this update. And also you can restart all clips by holding the shift button and hitting the play button. So you can do this. So overall 1.2 is a minor update with some useful stuff, nothing to get too excited about, but I'm definitely looking forward to the next update which if we go by Ableton's Instagram post should arrive sometime in February. So that was all for today guys, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more Ableton related stuff, here's another video for you to watch up here and I will catch you later.